We're going to take a look at um, a flash unit typical of the type that we use during the lighting circuits exercise on the CP filters course. This one here is made by Verl and like all the other ones that we use regardless of manufacturer there are just the three terminals on it and if you look here you can see the terminals are numbered 49, 49A and 31. 49 is just the international DIN code for a live feed into a flash unit. 49A is the code for an, an oscillating output and 31 is the code for ground. Now what we're going to do, we're just going to take a look inside the unit. And when we remove it there, we're going to have a look and see, okay, what can we identify here? What do we know already? Well, this thing here, this assembly here, it looks sort of like a relay because you can see there's a coil there. And if you look in from the side here, you can see there's a set of contacts. Now that makes sense because the indicator circuits, when it's wired up, the indicator circuits are going to be passing uh, three and a half amps. That's um, 221 watt bulbs is 42 watts. Uh, 12 volt nominal supply, 12 goes into 42, 3.5 times. And we know from other areas of the course, we know that switching anything above three or four amps in automotive electrical circuits becomes problematic. Hence the relay. So there's a good chance that's a relay. What else can we recognize here? Well, we can recognize this guy here. He is a capacitor of some sort. This fella here is a resistor. This fella here is a resistor. And in behind here, we can see a third resistor. Anything else going on? Well, we can see a chip here of some sort. And we notice that one end of the chip has an indentation on it. And that helps us decide, okay, what way the chip is numbered. And the last feature, really the only thing that we don't really recognise immediately, is this guy here. So it's a thick piece of wire. And we're not quite sure what he's doing yet, but we will have a route around. Looking more closely at the chip here, we can see quite clearly the number on the chip. So there's various different numbers, T244U2043B. And seven seven four zero eight eight something like that. Um, you go off and you Google those numbers, but the one that returns the hits is U two zero four three B, and that brings you back a hit for um, various different data sheets on this chip. And sure enough, our Google search turns up a wealth of information, including this data sheet here from Temic Semiconductors. And you can see it's on the U2043B chip. And they're saying it's a flasher 30 milliohm shunt pilot lamp to ground or VBAT. And it gives you a description of the unit, lists its features, some ordering information, of course. But there's this invaluable circuit diagram. And when we flip over the page, you can see we get a pinout for the actual chip itself. So we can see that there's um, eight pins on board and we can see where pin one is by looking for this little indentation there. So that one is pin one and it goes all the way around and that one is pin eight. There's also a functional description so that's going to be a great help to us as we try work out what's happening here. A few calculations there, we're not going to be worried about that. And so there are also uh, five or six other pages um, attached to the data sheet. But the first two pages of what we're reading. All I've done here is I've cut out the circuit diagram from the data sheet. And this heavy black area here represents the uh, chip. And let's look and see what we picked up on, what we recognised. Well, we sort of reckoned that this guy here was more than likely some sort of a relay. So that's based on the knowledge that we already had. And if you look here at the diagram, sure enough, you can see there's the windings of a relay and there's the contact breakers. And if you look here, you can see 49A, that's the output of the flash unit. And you go back up the way, 49 is the input of the flash unit. So that's one, two, and the third terminal that we're interested in is ground, terminal 31. And sure enough, 
this thing here is a relay just like we speculated we also spotted three resistors so let's see what we can see well we can see one two three four resistors here now the thing to remember is that one of the resistors is actually on board a chip so we won't be able to see that one so we have that's one of the resistors that we saw that's another one and that's another one now if you look carefully at this here you can see that this one is marked R1 and this one here is also marked R1 so clearly a bit of a typographical error there um, from what I can make out this is R1 and that one should be R4 now getting back to our friend here this thick wire that we're not really quite sure what's going on with it we can see here that it's connected directly to this terminal there, there she is there comes in and it's coming directly from terminal 49 comes in terminal 49 and goes across and comes back out here it's also connected to what is pin 7 on the chip so let's go and have a look at the sheet and see can we spot it and sure enough here when we go over and look at there's terminal 49 you can see it comes in directly and it goes into this unit here and it's down here it's marked as a shunt resistor so that's what this fellow is this guy here is a shunt resistor so what's the purpose of a shunt resistor well you can see here he's connected off to pin 7 on the chip and the chip also has connections on pin 2 and pin 6 from uh, the live supply now the thing about this chip is this chip needs to know how much current is passing through the circuit now the circuit uh, usually handles about three and a half amps now obviously you couldn't put anything near that through this chip here but the chip still has to know how much current is being passed in the circuit and the reason why it has to know is because if a bulb fails only half the amount of current will flow but the chip needs to let the driver know that one of the bulbs is gone. So the chip is looking from, for information from the circuit as to whether both bulbs are working or not. If the chip senses that one of the bulbs has failed, the chip will then double its flash rate. In other words, the driver of the vehicle will get to know that there's something wrong with the circuit, probably a bulb gone. So how does the shunt resistor do this? Well, basically, you can see here it's quite a small value resistor it's only 30 milliohms 0 0.03 of an ohm and the reason why it's so small is we don't want to interfere with the operation of the circuit because don't forget the live comes in here through the shunt resistor across the contacts in the relay and out to the load so that's why the resistance value is so small but we're also feeding information to the chip from here and here so in other words the chip gets to see what the voltage drop is across the shunt. So if we know the voltage drop and if we know the value of this resistor here we can work out how much electricity is flowing in the circuit. So that way we don't have to put the three and a half amps into this chip here because it wouldn't be able to handle it but all the chip is basically doing is monitoring the voltage drop across this resistor here. The voltage drop is directly proportional to the amount of electricity flowing through it. The more electricity that flows through it, the bigger the voltage drop. The less electricity, the less the voltage drop. And when the chip sees a change in voltage drop across this shunt resistor here, it changes its flash rate accordingly. So that's what I that think now for. that probably the easiest thing to do is to desolder all these components and put them onto a breadboard. That's probably the next best move to do. So, thanks to the miracle of YouTube, I've now desoldered all the components. So I've removed them all off the board, just desoldered them, and I've laid them all out on the breadboard. So I'm just going to take up my diagram, and here's the breadboard. And now let's have another look and see.
Okay, so I had my capacitor. So there you can see the capacitor. Um, I have a resistor. So there's the actual resistor, this guy here. There's the chip, so that's the whole thing here. And on board we have the pulse generator and we have two comparators. We have a built-in resistor, um, we have um, a diode clamping across the relay coil and the whole thing is connected to ground. So that's what's going on there. And then removed from the whole thing over here, I have my relay. So that's that guy there. There's my relay. So that's the whole thing there. So I'm just going to connect it. All I'm going to it. use here is um, a spare tail lamp indicator assembly that I have. And you can see there, there are two 21 watt bulbs. Well, it's a 21 5 watt bulb here and a 21 watt bulb here. This guy is for indicators. This guy is for stop tail. But I'm just going to adapt them and I'm going to use um, this bulb here as my load for my flash unit there. And you can see I've just got a, a small crock going onto it. So here so I that's am, gonna be all connected up, ready to roll. So you can see I have my power supply there, my book boost converter. I've got my breadboard with all the components from the flash unit laid out, connected up. And if you look over there, I have my makeup um, indicator circuit load there is there. So everything's ready to go. So all i got to do now really is, is just uh, give it some power. So I go to my power supply unit there and I had it on set there that effectively switches it off. So if I do OK, what I'll do is switch on the output. So you can see it's switching right now. You can hear it there now actually. So there she is switching away. And just to verify, so there's the circuit working. 